Ah, it's not plugged. <laughs> it's not plugged in. <laughs> Anticlimactic. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be making some meals that you can whip together with only seven ingredients. Uh, just as a heads up though, I have not included oil, salt, or pepper in the list of seven ingredients, just because I'm gonna assume that those are ingredients we already have laying around the house. And the extra theme for today's video is these are all pasta recipes, so let's dive right in. For the first recipe, we're making a grilled red pepper pesto pasta, and these are the seven ingredients we'll be needing to make it. So in case you're interested in actually speeding up this recipe, you could just use three roasted bell peppers straight from a jar and then you can skip these first few steps, but I actually want to make and roast or grill my own bell peppers. So that's what we're gonna do together first. I've got three bell peppers here and they can be either all red or a combination of red and orange, whatever you've got. And once we've chopped them into really big chunks, we're then gonna add a little bit of oil to a large skillet on medium high heat and add the bell peppers to it. Then we can add a sprinkle of salt and pepper, and we're gonna let this cook undisturbed for just a few minutes. Instead of grilling the bell peppers in a pan like this, you could actually roast it in the oven if you wanted to. I just find that the stove top is a lot faster. And when the bell peppers are completely cooked through and nice and blistered, we're gonna push it to the side of the pan because now we're gonna add in the garlic, and we're gonna cook this until it's lightly golden, which is just gonna take a couple of minutes. Then you can remove the skillet from the heat and we're gonna transfer all of the contents to a food processor or using a blender should work well here too. Then we're gonna return that same skillet to the heat, add a touch more oil, and then we're gonna spread out the zucchini in a single layer, again with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then we're gonna let this sit mostly undisturbed. We're only gonna give it a stir every few minutes or so. Next, what we can do is add about 400 grams of spaghetti or any pasta that you'd like to a large pot of salted boiling water. And while that cooks away, we're gonna return to the food processor. To the grilled bell peppers that are in there, we're also gonna add in a quarter cup of sun-dried tomatoes and a quarter cup of roasted walnuts. We're gonna pop the lid onto it and we're gonna blitz this up until it's nice and smooth. And you're gonna be left with kind of what resembles to me anyway, like a, a red pepper pesto, lovely consistency. In the last minute of the pasta cooking, we're gonna add in about one and a half cups of frozen green peas. This is just so that they thaw and cook a little bit too. And then when the pasta is al dente, we can drain all of it. We'll then return the pasta back to the pot and add most, but not all of the pasta just yet. Then we can add the cooked zucchini to the pot too, along with the red pepper sauce. And then we're gonna give everything a toss. At this point, we can assess the sauciness. If you like the ratio of the pasta to the sauce, leave it as is. Otherwise, you can add more pasta until it's kind of the ratio or consistency of your liking. And then we're ready to serve this one up. Once we've added a heaping pile of spaghetti into our bowls, we can then garnish it with some optional parsley or basil, maybe a little sprinkle of chopped roasted walnuts or some fresh lemon juice I think works really well here too. I always think it's a load of fun to try making your own homemade pasta sauce, especially when it's this simple to make and this packed full of flavor. The next recipe we'll be making is a lovely and saucy hummus pasta bake. And these are the seven ingredients we'll be needing to whip it together. There's only one ingredient that needs chopping in this recipe and that's the broccoli. We're not gonna waste the stem, we can use that up too. So we can first cut away the fibrous outer layer and then chop up the stem into really small little bits. Then the broccoli head itself, we only need about half of it. We can break this up into small little bite-sized florets. Then we're gonna cook about 400 grams of pasta in some salted boiling water. And after about five minutes, we can toss in the broccoli stem bits to cook as well. So while the pasta cooks away, we're gonna really quickly whip together a sauce, which is just two ingredients, couldn't be easier. So it's hummus and coconut milk, and I've got a couple tips for you. When it comes to the hummus, try to choose one that you love the taste of, because this is essentially gonna become the taste of the sauce. So we've got a nice spicy red pepper hummus, but you can use whichever one you'd like. So we're gonna add about 200 grams of this to a large bowl. And then when it comes to the coconut milk, you can, if you don't love coconut milk, use like a uh, soy or oat cooking cream instead. That also works really well here, but if you do enjoy the taste of coconut milk, then we're gonna put a full can of this into the bowl as well, and then we're gonna whip everything together. You could also at this stage, if you wanted to, add a little bit of like dried oregano or dried basil if you'd like. We just aren't going to because we wanna keep it to seven ingredients. Now when the pasta is about three to four minutes away from being al dente, we're already gonna drain it, and then we can add it to a deep baking dish. We're also gonna add in the broccoli florets and about one and a half cups of cherry tomatoes. Then we can pour the sauce over top of everything and toss it to coat. 
When ready, we'll pop it in the preheated oven at 390 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius to bake for about 15 to 20 minutes. So while that bakes, we're gonna make a very speedy vegan Parmesan cheese. So to a small food processor, we're gonna add in half of a cup of raw cashews, or raw almonds work well here too, plus two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, a quarter teaspoon of optional garlic powder, plus a little sprinkle of salt. Then we're gonna blitz this up until we're left with a very fine meal-like consistency. In the last five minutes of the pasta baking, I always like to take it out of the oven. I like to sprinkle over top some of this Parmesan cheese and then return it to the oven just so that the cashews can toast a little bit, but this is definitely an optional step. And then when the pasta is done baking, we're ready to serve it up. The baked pasta is gonna look a little bit roasted, a little bit crispy along the top. Those cherry tomatoes are gonna be wonderfully blistered, but at the bottom of the dish, you're gonna notice as you're scooping it out that it's still wonderfully saucy. So scoop up a whole bunch of the pasta, serve it in your favorite bowls, and sprinkle over top some more of the homemade Parmesan cheese bits if you'd like. Garnish it with some optional slices of basil leaves, or maybe a little bit of ground black pepper. The pasta can be made to taste differently every time you make it, depending on the flavor of the hummus that you choose. And the little cherry tomatoes are easily my favorite part, the way they burst in your mouth every time you bite into them. It adds a really delicious taste that complements the creaminess of the sauce so nicely. For the final recipe, we're gonna be making this beautiful creamy butternut squash and sage pasta. And these are the seven ingredients we're gonna need to put this all together. We're gonna start first with a whole bulb of garlic, cutting off the top about half a centimeter or so. We just wanna expose the cloves that are inside of it, and then we're gonna transfer this to a baking tray. Next, we're gonna prepare a butternut squash. If you don't love the skin, you can peel it using a potato peeler. Just be very careful when you do it. But personally, I like the extra fiber and I don't mind the skin, so I'm gonna keep it on. Now, using a sharp and sturdy knife, we can very carefully cut the top off of the head of the butternut squash as well as the base. This is so that I can stand very securely on our cutting board. And then we can very carefully cut the butternut squash in half lengthwise. We're then gonna scrape out the seeds and the stringy bits that are in the squash, just letting them fall into a bowl of water. And we're gonna be using these seeds again in a little bit. Then we're gonna slice the butternut squash into thin little strips. The thinner we slice it, the faster it's gonna bake in the oven. We're only gonna use about half of the butternut squash for this recipe, but feel free to use all of it if you'd like or swap it out for some sweet potato or another roasted vegetable instead. Once we've transferred all of the squash to the baking tray, we're gonna drizzle over top some oil, plus make sure to add some oil on top of the head of garlic, and then we can sprinkle over top of the squash a little bit of salt and a bit of pepper, and then we're gonna to toss everything to coat. When the oven is finished preheating at 390 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius, we're gonna pop this all in the oven to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. While that's baking away, let's be resourceful and make use of the squash seeds. We're gonna pick out the seeds from the bowl of water and we're gonna transfer it to a clean kitchen cloth where we can then massage the seeds with the cloth just to dry it out a little bit. After the 20 minutes or so are up, the garlic should be nice and golden. So we're gently gonna give the squash in the tray a flip. We can then remove the garlic from the baking tray and put the seeds in its place. We're gonna add a touch more oil, only if you think it needs it, plus a little bit of salt and pepper, and then toss this all together to coat, and then return the tray to the oven to bake for another 10 minutes or so. Now to a large pot of salted boiling water, we're ready to start cooking our pasta, about 400 grams or so in total. While the pasta's cooking away, we are going to slice up a generous about 15 to 20 grams of fresh sage leaves. You can just stack them on top of each other, give it a roll, and then you can slice it really thinly, or at least that's my favorite way to do it. And then to a large pan on medium high heat, we're gonna first add about a tablespoon of olive oil. When it's hot, we can then add in the sage leaves to cook for about one to two minutes. And when the sage leaves have started to shrivel, we can then add in the entire head of roasted garlic, of course, making sure that we're not adding the skin to the pan too. And then using the back of our wooden spatula, we can mash it in with the sage to puree the garlic a little bit. A whole bulb of garlic in here might seem like it's a lot, but because we roasted it, it caramelizes it and that kind of mutes the intensity. It's actually a little bit sweet, so it works really, really nicely in the sauce. Then we can add in about 250 milliliters or a full cup of vegan cooking cream, which makes this pasta sauce so rich and creamy. Plus we're gonna scoop out about three quarters of a cup of the pasta cooking water, and we're gonna add this to the pan as well. Then give it all a stir and let this sit to heat up. When the pasta is about a minute or two away from being al dente, we can already drain it. Then we're gonna add it to the sauce and let it cook for another minute or so so that the sauce thickens up and so that the pasta does become al dente. When everything is pretty much ready, I always like to squeeze in the juice from about half of a lemon 
just for a bit of freshness and zest. Stir it in and then we're ready to plate this one up. Add a generous few scoops of the pasta to your bowl. Layer on top of that some of the butternut squash, plus maybe some fresh arugula, which I think works really well here, and then a little bit more pasta on top of that. Then we can garnish the top with some of those crunchy roasted squash seeds, but if you'd prefer, you can always serve this with some toasted pine nuts instead, and then you're ready to enjoy. The creaminess from the sauce and the sweetness from the caramelized butternut squash and garlic make for such a heavenly combination. I hope you enjoyed today's video, friends, and if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It always helps to support the channel when you do. And if you're interested in more seven ingredient meals, we actually made a video like it before. So I'm gonna link it for you at the end of today's video to check out, or in the link in the description box below if you want more minimal ingredient meals. Plus I'll leave the links to all of the recipes that we made together today in the description box too, in case you wanna see the full breakdown. But hey, thanks so much for cooking with us today. Really appreciate it. Pickup Lines signing off, and we'll see you in the next video. You can totally leave it out. Um, no, you can't leave it out. <laughs> hey friends, welcome back. There's a crow there, sorry, it distracted me. Squirrel!